The intent of this Part 7 video is to review the eight factors that influenced World War II B-17 combat bombing accuracy. It will become evident that these factors will have nothing to do with the Norton bombsite. Influence number one, we have shown in our Part 5 bombing series video that accuracy is dependent upon bombing altitude. Roughly, bombing accuracy decreases by 2.5% for every 1,000 foot increase in bombing altitude. Bombers needed to fly at high altitude to reduce the lethality of ground artillery flak. Influence number two, we also discussed the effect of bomber speed at bomb release. A decrease of 8% in bomb accuracy had been observed for every 5% increase in bomber speed. B-17 bombers generally flew at a formation indicated airspeed of 150 to 155 miles per hour. Influence number three, bombing accuracy de decreased dramatically as follow-on formations had to contend with smoke and debris from the first formations over the target. Each 500-pound bomb was capable of displacing 175 cubic yards of soil. This is equivalent to about 13 dump trucks worth of fill. The soil would be thrown into the air, dramatically decreasing target visibility for the following bombing squadrons. It was difficult and sometimes impossible to get a visual fix on the mean point of impact, the MPI. This chart documents the diminishing bombing accuracy based on formation order over the target. Bomb accuracy fell from 82% for the first formations over the target to 60% for the second formations down to 30% for the fifth formation over the target. Accuracy was defined as 10% of all bombs fell within a thousand foot radii of the MPI. Consider a 360 plane bomber raid. Each of the 30 12 plane squadrons will take turns bombing the target. If the day is clear, the first squadron should have no issues sighting the MPI and be able to bomb accurately. The smoke and debris from the first squadron's bomb strikes will hamper visibility of the follow on squadrons. In this image, formation number two is approaching the MPI. Visibility has been reduced due to the bomb strike debris of the first formation's releases. The follow-on squadron's bombers will need to drop their bombs by inaccurate grid sighting on features outside of the smoking mess. Influence number four. Weather was the largest factor in limiting bomber operations. Cloud cover is defined as a fraction of the sky obscured by clouds. It is measured in terms of tents. A 0-10 cloud cover implies no clouds or visibility issues. A 10-10 cloud cover implies 100% cloud cover. The 8th Army Air Forces would deploy their bomber fleets if the expected cloud cover was at 5 tenths or less. Europe was socked in by heavy cloud cover such that the bomber fleet was grounded 4 out of every 5 days. This chart represents the number of days the 8th Army Air Forces deployed its bombers per month. The x-axis is the month and year, the y-axis is the number of bomber deployment days for that month. Once radar bombing became available in September 1944, cloud cover was no longer an impediment to deployments. This chart represents a visual and radar line of sight based on altitude. Radar line of sight is slightly longer due to some reflection of the radar waves. The x-axis is the line of sight distance from 1 to 200 nautical miles. The y-axis is the altitude from 5,000 to 30,000 feet. At 25,000 feet, the bombardier should have a line of sight equal to 160 nautical miles. This chart represents bombing accuracy as a function of cloud cover for non-radar sighted bombing. The x-axis is a cloud cover during the bombing run from 010 to 1010. The y-axis is the bombing circular error in feet. The dots in the chart body are the distance from the bomb impact point to the MPI in feet. The line is the mean curve fit. The data indicates bombing accuracy decreased by 18% as target sighting was reduced as the cloud cover varied from 010 to 510. Recall from the Part 5 bombing video series that stateside cadet 
training bomb strike radial errors equated to about 400 feet for combat speeds and altitudes under 010 cloud conditions. Since combat radial errors are 1,020 feet at 010 cloud conditions, this implies combat bombing accuracy is 2.5 times less accurate than training accuracy. Influence number five, the Germans would generate artificial smoke screen to obscure visibility. Crews were instructed to bomb coming from the upwind direction to increase target recognition between the generated smoke. Influence number six, the type of target also affected bombing accuracy. This chart represents the actual and expected bombing circular error as a function of bomb target type. The x-axis row is the target type, the Y column is a circular error in feet. Operational data shows an increase in bombing accuracy of coastal targets, bridges, and marshalling yards over fuel and synthetic oil refineries. Influence number seven, the type of bomber affected the bombing error. This chart represents the bombing accuracy of the B-17 and B-24 bombers. The x-axis is a month and year, the y-axis is a percentage of bombs that fell within 1,000 feet of the MPI. Data shows B-17s are 8% more accurate than B-24s. This trend was also observed in the 15th Army Air Forces and during training. This is likely due to the B-17s being a more stable bombing platform. Contrary to common perception, flak did not have an influence on bombing accuracy. The report studied the effect of flak had on bombing accuracy outside of the need to bomb at higher altitudes. It is popular opinion to ascribe a loss in bomb strike accuracy due to the bombardier's loss of concentration due to flak. The results of the study indicate no correlation between flak intensity and bombing accuracy. This chart is, shows the results of that study. Influence number eight is by far the largest factor overshadowing all other influences with regard to bomb placement error. It's target sighting by radar. Radar navigation and bombing started in September of 1943. Radar bombing is also referred to as overcast bombing, blind bombing, Mickey bombing, H2X bombing, Pathfinder bombing, or PFF bombing. PFF is an abbreviation for Pathfinder Force. Overcast bombing occurs when visibility levels prevented visual bombing. Targets may be obscured by clouds, smoke, or haze. Radar will be able to see through these visual impediments. The squadron's lead ship was replaced with a Pathfinder plane. A Pathfinder plane was a specially equipped B-17 ship where the ball turret was replaced with a radome. The radome would house the radar antenna. The MPI would be sighted by the radar. The radar operator would work with the bombardier by providing relevant Norton bombsite data in locating and targeting the MPI. Like in visual bombing, the other bombers in the squadron formation would release their bombs when the Pathfinder plane released its smoke bomb. Radar bombing allowed more bombing days as cloud cover was no longer an obstacle for fleet grounding. This chart outlines the cumulative tonnage of bombs dropped by the 8th Army Air Force's B-17s and B-24s. Slightly more tonnage of bombs were dropped by the targets sighted by H-2X radar-equipped pathfinders than visual target sighting. This tabular data represents bombing accuracy experiences of the 8th Army Air Forces over Nazi-occupied Europe from September to the end of 1944. The first column indicates good to fair visual bombing accuracy equated to 30% of all bombs landing within 1,000 feet of the MPI. Whereas, if H2X radar was adopted for sighting over a 10-10 cloud cover target, only 0.2% of bombs would strike within 1,000 feet of the MPI. Notice I said 0.2%, not 2%. That means only one bomb out of 500 drops landed within a thousand feet of the target MPI. 35% of all bombs were dropped by sighting the target with Pathfinder equipped H2X radar with cloud cover at 1010 during this period. Also, 41.5% of Pathfinder H2X sighted bombs fell beyond five miles of the aim point with cloud cover at 1010 during this period. This chart graphically represents bombing accuracy for targets sighted by visual NH2X radar. 
The x-axis is the distance from the aiming point in miles. The y-axis is the cumulative percentage of all bombs dropped. The family of curves for various sighting methods and cloud cover. When we see bomb drop images like this, recall only 0.2% of the bombs falling will strike within 1,000 feet of the target, and more importantly, over 41% of the bombs will strike beyond 5 miles of the target's MPI. Couple observations and takeaways on the data presented. Most of the 8th Army Air Force's tonnage dropped by B-17s and B-24s were target sighted with pathfinders adopting radar. Combat bombing accuracy is overwhelmingly dependent on target sighting method overshadowing all other factors discussed. Orders of magnitude reduction in bombing accuracy is expected if the target is sighted by pathfinders adopting radar. The other major visual bombing factors are all related to target recognition, like squadron bombing order, bombing smoke and debris, cloud cover, smoke screens, and target type. None of these factors are related to the Norton bombsite accuracy. Enemy fire was also not a factor in bombing accuracy. Let me know in the comments section if you were aware of these bombing accuracy influences. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.